Luke 15 verses 1 to 3, 11b to 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare, and here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the father said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and I will put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good afternoon, St. Andrews. Happy Friday, where we meet once again on Friday afternoon in preparation for Sunday. I hope you are well and that your week has been productive and joyful. It's been a difficult week around the Coggin House. You have seen some of the pictures of the re- uh, modeling of sorts that is going on on our outside shed and that work has continued this week with tearing out and replacing of uh, damaged uh, sides of the carport and uh, redoing a perimeter drain around the sides and the back of the carport as well as envisioning what a new shed would look like, i.e. my workspace where I build pins. And uh, all of that uh, pin making equipment is now under our stairs in a storage closet, awaiting finalization of our remodeling project. It's tough to be in the middle of remodeling not knowing exactly the end result, having to wait for what might eventually be. I've had conversations this week and last week and over the last several weeks of where St. Andrews is going. What exactly is our planning process? What exactly will be the finished product? And I have to say that we must be faithful to every step and wait for the Lord to show us exactly what the finished product will be. Where we are now is that we continue to trust that the visioning work, the questions that you've been asked to answer about our present and our future will continue to show us we do have a number of questions. We do have incredible needs financially, leadership-wise, and in every other area. But God has never lost sight of who we are and who we need to be. Over the coming weeks, we're going to be having conversations with Knox and Trinity Presbyterian churches about how we might uh, share more creatively. Knox will be joining us for worship on Easter, not just as a spectator, but as a participant, and we look forward to that. The prayer that Thomas Merton prayed, My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing it. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have desire in all that I'm doing. I know that I will never do anything apart from that desire, and I know if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. A prayer by Thomas Merton, a prayer of unknowing, it is called. And so may our unknowing lead us to know that God is indeed beside us, indeed with us, and indeed holding our hands through perhaps some somewhat dark and unknown time of where we're actually going to be months from now or a year from now. But we know who holds our hand. Thanks be to God. Amen.